Hello all, this is Bob Brown with Community Coronavirus Update number 68. Uh, themes for today are wanting black and white answers to great questions and uh, will there be another surge, which is the big question. And uh, of course, sometimes uh, we've got simple answers but wrong, but complex but right. And so we'll talk a little about the complexity today. So, you know, if you really want the simple answer, it really goes back like I've been saying. We, we have the possibility to keep Nebraska deaths below 3,000, but to do that, we all got to wear a mask around anyone who doesn't live in our household and or with un unknown vaccination status. Obviously, you can get together now if you've all been vaccinated, but that's different. Still avoid the crowded, confined spaces. Keep your distance, ideally six feet, but not always, and we'll talk about that a little bit. And get vaccinated as soon as you can, because that's the real end of that of this thing. So uh, the theme today, wanting black and white answers to great questions, and here's a good blog post called Thinking Gray about uh, how we, unfortunately, the world's more complicated. We all want it to be black and white and simple, but it's just really not. And, and this idea that someone's just going to have the right magic answer right off the bat and it's never going to change is part of our problem. It, that's not true. That we're learning as we go, and of course things are going to change, and we just have to be okay with that and do our best to learn what's happening and why. Uh, so my, my goals for a lot of these podcasts is get you to understand the, what's underlying it so that you can understand why the, the information is changing. And, and so as an example, I'll use this. This is something called a Kaplan-Meier curve, and essentially it's, it's two comparison groups to see how they do. And what this is is, is the people who've been infected uh, during uh, or shortly after being vaccinated, either because they had the vaccine or because they had the placebo. And, and what you see here is you see a big divergence at about two weeks. So that tells you that the vaccine is making a nice immune response. Yes, some people got coronavirus, but most of those happened before there was time uh, for the vaccine to work, which means the vaccine is actually potentially even better than we think, which is the good news. And then once you hit that immunity, things really plateau and, and there's a few people getting infected, but not very many. And so this tells you that, hey, this is really working actually. Whereas the people who didn't get vaccinated, more and more infections happening because they're not developing the immunity that the vaccine provides. So this is visual evidence of how a vaccine works. And this tells you, yep, this is a good one. Uh, and the all three vaccines have somewhat similar Kaplan-Meier curves, although I can't find one for the Johnson Johnson vaccine, but it is somewhat similar based on the data that I can see. Uh, but what's confusing is unfortunately, so here's one uh, the CDC pushed out last last week, what you can do when you are considered fully vaccinated. Uh, to be honest with you, I think this is wrong uh, because it, it, it they're taking the simple answer, meaning two weeks after your shot, whether it, the first shot if it's Johnson Johnson or after the second Johnson shot if it's Pfizer and Moderna. However, for all three vaccines, the, the Kaplan-Meier curve probably looks the same. So why is it that Moderna takes six weeks to become immune, Pfizer five weeks, and Johnson Johnson two? Well, the answer is they're actually probably the same. But the CDC had to have a simple answer so that people could just have the simple version. The reality is most of your immunity happens about two weeks, but you may take a few more weeks to get full immunity. So take that into consideration. So don't say that you're totally good at 14 days. You, you're going to get some improvement in your antibody response. So yes, for the most part, you're immune two weeks after for the Johnson Johnson, but you're probably also the same thing for Pfizer and Moderna. And that's part of the backstory why several countries like England and Canada and some famous people like Michael Osterholm are, were pushing for us to take a one-shot strategy. Let's just get everybody as one shot as soon as faster because we'd vaccinate more people that way. They wouldn't have the full two doses, but there's some pretty good data saying that one dose might be good enough for Moderna and Pfizer. Uh, and then we could just delay that, that booster dose till you know, 12 weeks, 16 weeks, 18 weeks, maybe later, and therefore potentially vaccinate people and save more lives. I happen to believe in that camp. I actually think that uh, they're getting it right, although Fauci and Walensky don't agree with that. So, you know, people, very intelligent people can have differing opinions by reading the data. So that doesn't mean we don't know anything. It just means this is a complicated subject and it, and it, it you know, the data will prove us out one person out at the end. And sometimes, even if you don't agree with it, you have to just participate anyway. So I actually got the Moderna vaccine myself. I believe the second dose, the one shot strategy enough that I actually tried to get my second dose to somebody I thought needed it more, uh, but they wouldn't let me. You know, I could have been stubborn and pushed it and said, no, I'm, I just could have just literally not shown up for my second dose. And then they probably would have given it to somebody else, but I couldn't guarantee that. So at the end of the day, I got my second dose because our system doesn't have the logistics to handle that. And thankfully, the person who I wished I could have given my second dose was able to get it through a pharmacy a week or two later. Uh, you know, but it is what it is. So you just have to do your best uh, and, and try as best as the system will let you. 
Um, and that one other again, you know, Nebraska, so we use fist football analogies. So expecting one strategy to not change the entire pandemic is like expecting Coach Frost to have the entire playbook figured out from first quarter to fourth quarter and expect him to not change it. And that would be a really dumb coach to do that because sometimes throwing's better, sometimes running's better, sometimes you got to adjust, run left versus right. You have to adjust your strategy. And every good coach would adjust their strategy. That doesn't mean he's a dumb coach, it means he's a smart coach, not a dumb one. But people are expecting to have the magic answers before this pandemic start, start even started. And it's like, we're going to have to keep changing our strategy as we go. That is not a sign of the public health system not knowing what they're doing. It's a sign of them actually responding. The people who I really don't like are the people who latched onto the Great Barrington Protocol and still think it's right, even though it's been so proven wrong. Those are the people who don't know what they're talking about. So. Uh, the next big question is what's about what about the surge? And so there's a really good write up yesterday from your local epidemiologist about where is the surge? If there's a surge, how come it hasn't happened yet? And there's four good explanations, which she walks through. And I think she does a great job of doing this. And I think hypothesis number four is that the surge is still coming. It's just not here yet. Uh, and, and the reason we think that's the case is because that's what's happened to everybody else. You always want to watch your people down the road. And we are watching people down the road. And unfortunately, for example, Italy is going to lock down for Easter because their surge is happening. And so we need to watch everybody else because that can give us at least a better idea of predicting what may or may not happen. And again, it's still not 100%. I mean, it doesn't mean the surge is definitely going to happen, but there's a lot of things we can do in the next few uh, uh, weeks that can either make it less likely to happen. And so knowing this information, hopefully you will listen to it. Um, you know, the good thing, the biggest, you know, she stopped, for, hypothesis number one is that we're just vaccinating enough people, which is not true. Although we're making a lot of progress with vaccinations, especially here in Nebraska, we're not in the top 10, but we're getting closer there. So that's good. Um, we're not nowhere close to herd humidity. You have to have at least 50 to 70% to even start seeing the effect of vaccinations, at least in a significant way. And we're not there yet. But the good news is we're getting, we're making progress. We're getting to 2.4 million doses a day. Uh, you know, there was a time a couple months ago where Biden was hoping we could do a million a day. We're right at 2.4. I could see us getting to 3 million by next month, which would be great. So maybe this May 15th to 50%, maybe we'll get pushed that back and that'd just be awesome. Uh, but no, the vaccine isn't enough yet. Yeah, we're just not there yet. Uh, and so uh, there's a good art, there's a good uh, outbreak.info is a good information on these new variants. And we have some of these variants in Nebraska already. We have B117, which was first identified in the United Kingdom. We have B1429, uh, first identified in California. There's no accident that these, these variants were described in Brazil, United Kingdom, South Africa, and here because we're the countries that kind of let it spread or run amok. Uh, but they, then they actually give you ability to track the variants. And the variants, although we have them, they're not enough to make a major effect yet. Uh, the variant has to hit probably 25 to 50 percent before you see it take off, and we're not there yet. So I think it's just a few weeks away yet. So don't expect uh, the variants to break out yet, but they might. And so we have to worry about this. Uh, they actually do break it down. And so uh, we're starting to hit in the United States that 25-ish percent. However, every state is a little different. And so what I like about this site as they show the variation between the states. In Nebraska, it's still 1%. So we could have two to four to six weeks left. Maybe we can get the vaccine, but enough people vaccinated in Nebraska before the variant hits. Unfortunately, on the other, other end of the country, we've got New Jersey, which is starting to hit that way. And what ha what's happening in New Jersey? Well, if you look at them, their numbers are already starting to head back up again. So what we have to do, the most important number, which I wish our state would finally get, it's the number of current cases spread. It's not the positivity rate. It's not the hospitalization rate. This is the best predictor of what's going to be happening down the pike. New Jersey's already having that. The good news is we haven't seen that yet. Uh, and essentially, this is that what we keep going over again. You have to understand our uh, an effective transmission rate. We're in this range right here. We, uh, herd humidity means things drop off like this. We haven't hit that yet. We're in a sort of a holding pattern here in Nebraska. And if you look at Lancaster County versus the rest of the state, our numbers look almost identical. We're kind of hovering in this middle range. We haven't gotten, you know, if we hit herd humidity, you'll see this rapidly drop. We haven't done that yet. And I think what's happening is we have two competing trends. We have some effect from some vaccinations. We have a better, uh, num more people doing the right thing. On the other hand, we have some people doing the wrong thing and the variants may start. So that's why I think we're sort of at a, at a holding pattern here. And we'll find out in the next couple of weeks which way we go. And the earliest warning, because this system, this system of testing isn't that accurate, uh, thankfully here in Lincoln, we've got the University of Nebraska doing random testing by you know almost a thousand uh, students a day. They can, we can watch them because they're going to have a really good numbers and they do. So I look at this every day to see how it's going. Thankfully, it's staying low here. So if the variant takes off, what we'll see is the UNL's data start going up. Hopefully, we'll have some uh, K through 12 like in our high schools testing again like we did a, a month or two ago. Hopefully, that'll give us another snapshot to, to predict this before it happens and hopefully stop it before it gets bad. Um, 
other things that are getting more complicated, I'm, I'm, I've, it frustrates me that people just are so latched on the six feet. Uh, sometimes in a good way, sometimes in a bad way. So this idea that just because I'm sitting six feet away from somebody at a restaurant, I'm safe is, is actually wrong. Uh, six feet, uh, that three to six feet happened. The initial studies were studying meningitis outbreaks in a school system and seeing that most of the infections dropped off for kids who sat more than three feet away and almost all were dropped off when kids sat more than six feet away. That was one of the early studies about droplet spread. However, in a school, most of the teachers talking to the student is not. And so three to six feet only works if people aren't talking very much. So that doesn't apply to a restaurant. And it certainly doesn't, uh, doesn't uh, work at a basketball game. On the flip side in this article is saying though, three to three feet may be enough if you're wearing a mask. And so it may, may be that we don't need as much distance in the schools if those kids are wearing masks. The mask may reduce it enough that almost all spread is, is, is less than three feet, not necessarily six. So that actually gives us more space. On the flip side, this isn't close to good enough. So I've, I've talked about this. If you look, you know, here are a bunch of people screaming, yelling in a, in a, in a crowd. Uh, that's going to go far beyond six feet. That might be going 10 and 12 feet. So six feet ain't enough if people have our nose commandos and chin diapers yelling for their team. And so you need a little bit new, more nuanced understanding of three versus six feet. Um, the other things uh, coming down the pike, yes, we have to work on, on uh, coronavirus vaccinations, but we've also lost a lot of ground on childhood vaccinations. We have so many parents who've missed well child checks, for example. We need to start getting on this because the last thing we needed to have is start out having outbreaks of things like pertussis or measles because we dropped our vaccination rates for everything else too. Uh, the good news is there's a lot of doctors in Nebraska are already working toward this. So for example, one of our projects I'm working on with our clinics uh, is to get as many children as possible in for well child checks so we can catch back up on our childhood vaccination rates in Nebraska. Uh, this is something I wish I could, we could get our public health system, our state uh, folks to work with us. Us physician groups, uh, the, the accountable care organizations have been working on this and we've actually got a project we're launching right now. Uh, the only group that's not working with us uh, so far uh, is, uh, is our state and our health departments, but I hope they'll join us in the, in the coming months. Um, so, you know, we need a little patience here and I like this cartoon because this is kind of where we are. Are we there yet? Are we there? No, we're not quite there yet. We're getting close, one to two months. Uh, so if people would just not drop their guard, continue to wear their mask, we can actually get out of this with less than 3,000 dead Nebraskans. Uh, one thing positive note, I, there was a really good op-ed uh, uh, written this uh, Dr. Paul Farmer. Uh, talking about, you know, what could be right. And he's a guy who works all over the world in some of the worst systems in the world, but he's a very optimistic person. We can get a lot right. I think there still is some hope that a lot of the things we learned the hard way of the coronavirus, we can start taking these lessons, adapt them to others. I think we are, are still a country that can achieve great things if we agree to work together. The biggest thing I think we've lost is that the government's role should be as neutral convener uh, convening public partner private partnerships and that's the biggest thing I think we've lost both here in Lincoln and in Nebraska is we don't have the government serving its neutral convener role uh, going forward I hope this summer we can move past coronavirus and start doing things like that again so summary again uh, we can keep Nebraska just below 3,000 the simplest answer is wear a mask on anyone you know who doesn't live in your household and has unknown vaccination status you can get together so like for example for Easter we're planning to get together but that's because my father-in-law and my parents they've been both vaccinated my wife and I are both physicians we've been vaccinated my brother-in-law is a lab person and he's been vaccinated so the only person not vaccinated is my daughter but she gets tested at UNL on a regular basis so I think the six of us can safely get together which is what we've all wanted we all want to get together and we just got to do it safely avoid those crowds don't go to the crowded restaurant or bar uh, keep your distance ideally at least six, six, six feet but it, the amount changes based on whether you're wearing a mask and the situation of course and they get vaccinated with your numbers up if we can do this we can be past this and have a normal summer uh, we're so close but just be patient so hopefully this is helpful to you uh, typical disclaimer that these are my opinions not necessarily everybody I work with but that's where I work with so you know where I am and healthylincoln.org is where this video and all the past videos house if anybody else wants to look at it